Welcome to the weekly update. We'll go over the action in the market for the past week, a week shortened by the Labor Day weekend, and then see how things look for the week of September 12th through the 16th. And we started off pretty negative. When I did the video a week ago, things were looking like they were, they potentially could just fall off a cliff. Well, we had a rough Tuesday, rough Monday and Tuesday, and then we finally hit support. And we have pretty much have been bouncing since then. And we've seen a lot of improvements. Now, some of the weekly charts are showing some improvements, but some are also still looking rather negative. If you want a more in-depth discussion of what's going on, please tune into the videos that I post every day. So let's go back and talk about the week's session. The S&P ended up stopping what had been a three-week losing streak. And we had fallen to at least a short-term oversold condition. A lot of our daily short-term indicators were giving us some extreme negative readings. We ended up bouncing up off of that. And there was a trend line right at about the 3,900 level. We were able to stay above that. We, we broke below it for a little while, but then we came back. And then we've kind of been launching higher ever since then. And things are turning a little bit more positive. We're still kind of in no man's land. We're, we're at this tipping point. We have a big week coming up this week with the CPI, the PPI, retail sales, consumer sentiment. So there's going to be a lot of data thrown at the markets this week. And this could really determine whether we go higher or lower from here, depending on how the market interprets the data that's coming out. On Tuesday, it was negative, but then the rest of the week was positive after we held that support that I referred to. The S&P, as well as the NASDAQ, were able to get back above their 50-day simple moving average. And these are two broad-based indexes, the S&P with the blue chips, the NASDAQ with a lot of tech. And to be able to get back above that 50-day moving average was pretty significant. Stocks rose in spite of a lot of negative news hitting the market, such as China extending their lockdowns, we also had Russia come out and they shut down the Nord Stream 1, where I actually heard it referred to as the Nordstrom 1 pipeline, and that this will go on. They're not just shutting it down to check a few things and then turn it back on again. It's going to last a while. And of course, Russia is blaming this on the sanctions that are imposed by the Western nations. The Reserve Bank of Australia, Canada, and the European Central Bank, they rate had rate hikes over the past week. Fed officials came out and made some comments that the market could have just latched onto and just freaked out about and had prices go lower. Basically, the stance is still remaining that the Fed is going to keep raising interest rates to, to try to get inflation under control. And then some point in the future, we'll, we'll kind of focus more on how the economy itself is doing. And that's pretty much been the stance all along. Even though the market has come in a few times and tried to change that narrative, Chairperson Powell comes back in and says, nope, 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 we're going to keep raising interest rates for as long as we need to do that. And then interest rates rose. That's another thing that could have been a headway for stocks. And the dollar was strong, at least earlier in the week, but then it showed some weakness as the week went on. The dollar's just been doing really well against the euro and the Japanese yen. The yen ended up falling to a 24 a 24-year low against the dollar, and the euro hit a 20-year low. Now, it doesn't mean that the dollar is all that great and wonderful. It just means that the yen and the euro are having more problems right now than the dollar, and these are the three major currencies, and so they don't really want to get into the euro or the yen, so they jump over into the dollar. The British pound, which is still very major, it saw its lowest level going all the way back to 1985. And then after we finished the week, all 11 sectors ended up being positive. So for the week, the Dow, actually, it should be up. I'm sorry, that's a typo there. We were up 3.65%. Volume continues to be below average. We're seeing volume picking up a bit, but at least on the daily charts, but it's still below average overall. The technicals, they're kind of mixed on the weekly chart. They're looking a lot more positive on the daily charts. 
they're kind of mixed in the intermediate and we're still negative in the long term with the daily charts. We're kind of seeing that same thing with the weekly charts. This is going to be the real fixation. Inflation and interest rates, which produce growth concerns, that's what the market's going to really be focused on. Now, other things could come about at any time, but the way it looks right now on Sunday, it looks like the markets will focus on these reports that are coming out and then react to those. The condition of the trend on the weekly chart, it is weakening and it's negative, but it's still above 20. So we still have a trend, but it is starting to come down. And I'll show you a chart of that. Here is the intraday chart starting here over here on Tuesday. This, we kind of chopped sideways for the most part. We tried to go up, then we went down, then back up, then down. And then on Wednesday, this is when things really started to recuperate. It looked like eh, we weren't doing much right off the start, but then we just took off to the races. Then Thursday came along and we actually gapped lower, but when we came back to fill that gap, we ended up going above that only to see. This is about the time when news came out that Queen Elizabeth II had passed away. I, th I wouldn't attribute the market action to that, but it was right around this time and we saw a sell program come in. We came down, we hit some support, and then we're able to bounce up and recoup a lot of what we had lost earlier in the day. And then Friday, we gapped higher, and this was by far the most positive day. We went above R1 and R2 and closed just about at the high for the session. So the Dow was up 2.7%, the NASDAQ up 4.1%, that's the real growth area, the S&P up 36 and the Russell is up, those are the small caps, up 4%. And the, the small caps have really been struggling lately, and they're still struggling on a relative basis. So this is just how the different indexes perform during the week. It's the mid caps. And I, I state this in the daily video. It's like, where'd that come from? But we're seeing a lot of interest in the mid cap stocks right now. And this was the index that performed the best, followed by the NASDAQ and the NASDAQ 100. The Dow, which had been holding up better when we've been going down, didn't see as much follow through to the upside this week, but it was still positive as well. This is going back to the all time high where the NYSE and the Dow have pretty much held up the best and the NASDAQ and the NASDAQ 100 have seen the biggest gains going back to the all time high that the S&P set in January. Sectors that were all positive on the week with discretionary. And that's another thing. This has been sneaking in and doing a little bit better than the rest of the market. <coughs> Excuse me. The discretionary really been getting hit hard a lot. And if you look over in the next column, this is a scooter score. This is how it looked for the week. And this is a technical analysis rating. And we want to see it in the 90s when it's really positive. But the fact that it was in the high 80s for this past week, that's that's pretty positive overall. And then the sector that did the least good was energy. Even though it was up, it was up the least. And that's been the sector that's really been performing well. And so this is how things performed over the week. All the sectors were up with discretionary doing the best and energy, again, doing the worst overall. Now, the current market valuation, they didn't update this chart yet or the next chart their aggregate index score but the other charts they did update and it's showing right now that the yield curve model is overvalued where we're just showing stocks are kind of getting ahead of interest rates and interest rates are getting ahead of stocks because lately they both have been going up and then we don't have a chart for this this is the buffett indicator also suggesting that we're overvalued right now the price earnings model, that is also above this yellow line here. So that's also suggesting we're overvalued. Interest rates, because they're so low, really it's stocks that are going up that's producing more of the overvalue right now. So this is considered fairly valued. We're just a little bit above the zero line here. And then the margin debt, this hasn't been updated since the end of July. And this tends to really lag with the data that we have for this but the last reading was that we were fairly valued and this is the part that's showing that we're overvalued on the mean reversion model because we're getting a little too bit too far away from 
this zero line is the historic trend line. And when we get really far away from that, the market has a tendency to come back since these act like magnets or rubber bands. And we're slightly above this yellow dash line. So we're into overvalued territory. As far as sentiment, after the session on Friday, we've gone back into neutral territory. Now, some other indicators out there were suggesting that sentiment was extremely negative. And a lot of times, in fact, most of the time, we use that as a contrary indicator. We weren't picking that up in the fear and greed index that we follow. But there were a few indications out there, especially the American Association of Individual Investors. They were extremely pessimistic on things and so far pessimistic that we look to use that as a bottoming type of a tool. Here's the historical chart there where the active asset managers, they're also getting pretty negative on things. Now, this came out on the 7th, so halfway through the week, and it's based on the previous week's information. And we were really struggling during that week. So it's not really concerning to us that this is falling. It's kind of old news. But we're getting down into this area where even though these guys are professionals, they have a tendency to overreact as well. And they're starting to get extreme negative in that regard. As far as the Ridex bear bull ratio, the latest reading kind of puts us in the middle. We're not showing excessive fear. That's when this spikes up. We're not showing excessive greed or complacency. That's when it really comes down. We're at 0.10 right now. And here's the AAII report showing that individual investors are extremely pessimistic. Now, we could go lower than this, but anytime it drops down into this area, we start looking for some kind of a move upward to go in the opposite direction. The spread between the risky loans and non-risky loans actually has declined a little bit. We want to keep an eye on this. When the economy really starts running into trouble, this has a tendency to really spike up. Well, it's actually declining now. And then the Chicago Financial Conditions Index, it's still below this black line. We start to get concerned when it goes above this black line. Here are some Isabel net charts. This is kind of the concern that's going through the markets. And what I'm seeing right now is they're starting to lower the earnings per share in their forward look. And as I state over and over, it's ultimately earnings that determine a stock price. If the earnings are going up, that justifies a higher stock price. And the inverse of that is also true. Well, with the looking forward, and, and remember, these are guesses, these are forecasts, these are looking out into the future and thinking what will happen. Well, they're really starting to come down. And then this model estimate that is also put on here, that is also showing that we could be seeing an a increase in a lowering of the forward earnings per share. So that's That's kind of a concern, but that's a little longer term. The market can still be overvalued or wait to get into a properly valued situation. It can wait for quite a while before it does that. We're seeing a really bad outflow of European equities. They're just getting hammered. They raised their interest rates this past week, and so people are taking their money out. Of course, in England, you had the passing of Queen Elizabeth II, and there's real negativity going through the European markets right now, but they did have a good session later in the week. This is the insider transaction ratio. A week ago, we had really spiked up and that was more bearish. Well, as stocks have been coming down, this line has also been coming down and we're more into a neutral reading right now. And these are legal insider transactions. There's a legal kind and an illegal kind. If I share information with you and I'm an officer in a company that's not public information, that's illegal insider trading. Legal insider trading is the CEO, the different officers in the company, people that really know what's going on. They have an inside look at their company and then they say, oh, I'm going to buy some stock because I think things look good in the future. That's legal. But then you have to report that and it comes out in a number of reports, including this one. Small caps are still historically cheap when compared to large caps, and we're seeing a continuation of that. The small caps have been underperforming as of late, and this blue line going down just shows how the small caps have been underperforming against the large caps. And we're also seeing some more tech outflows as well. Now, this is 
old information, later in the week, we started to see some inflows coming back in. So this might be a little bit dated. The manufacturing PMIs, this is looking at different countries and it's showing that they're all coming down. And this is suggesting that we're seeing a real global economic slowdown. The critical area is this line at the 50 mark. Whenever we're above 50, that shows that that particular economy is still expanding. When we drop below 50, it means it's contracting. We're just kind of hanging in right above the 50 level currently. And then this is GDP against the current activity indicator. This is just suggesting that with this, it's showing that the current activity is actually a little bit more positive than the historical GDP on a year over year basis. Even though they're suggesting that it's gonna go down, it's still above zero. So we're, there's still a lot of folks hanging in there thinking that the next GDP report is gonna end up being positive. And then you have your different estimates that are coming out for the third quarter. These charts are just bouncing all around here. This is another one. This just shows at the beginning of the week, it had the German Bund asset swap spread. And this is breaching the Lehman High. Some of you that are familiar with what happened with the great financial crisis, Lehman Brothers was one of the companies that went down in that whole thing. And this is where we really topped out. We also had the Eurozone breakup risk. That was back. This was another crisis that happened in 2011. We had the China problem here back in 2016. The pandemic, it spiked up, but that didn't last all that long. Well, with all the energy crisis that may be coming up in the winter, especially in Europe, there's some real problems on the horizon in Europe right now. And so we're seeing things really spike up in reaction to that. Okay, with the VIX, we actually declined overall with the line chart and declined as well on the bar chart, but we're still above 20 right now. Usually when we get below 20, that's when we're, we're not as fearful. But a lot of times these static numbers, they don't really mean all that much. So we end up looking at just what are the lines themselves doing and we compare the lines to each other. The ulcer index is actually coming down and being right about on top of the moving average. That would also suggest that sentiment is neutral currently since this measures fear. The possible positive scenarios, and I'm still putting those on, on hold. I'm not going over those in these videos. I do go over them in the daily videos. So if you want to keep up with what I'm looking at there, please watch those videos. Looking at earnings, the Schiller P.E. ratio, this is looking back. Some of the earlier charts that I showed you suggest that looking forward, we might be seeing some earnings coming down. Well, looking back based on company earnings reports, it still suggests that we are very overvalued. We're at 30.43, where the median and the mean is between 16 and 17. So on a historical basis, the market still is considered very expensive. Here are some fact set blog posts. There was only one this week. It just says the highest number of S&P 500 companies when they have their conference call after their earnings are released. They're saying the word recession a whole lot. And that's this spike up right here, way over on the right hand side. And this is how are they citing inflation, supply chain issues and recession. Where the, the green line here is the recession and that's what's most of the companies are really talking about now, but there's still the concerns of the the supply chain, and there's still a lot of concerns about a recession as well. Looking at the Fed, I've been using a little different approach here. This is what it looked like over a month ago at the upcoming meeting on the 21st of September that the Fed was going to have a 68% chance at that time of raising the interest rates three quarters of a percent. The current rate is two and a quarter to two and a half. And after that meeting, they thought it would be at three to three and a quarter. That would be 75 basis points. Then as the month went on, this dropped as we saw some weaker economic data, dropped a little bit more as August went on. Then we had some stronger economic data and this shot back up. And this is 
where we were at at the beginning of September, it was just a little bit, a little bit back over 50%. This is where we're at right now. This is after Friday's session. There's a lot of media out there, especially there was an article in the Wall Street Journal saying, yeah, it looks like the Fed's going to do the 75 basis point thing. And the market's pretty much settled on that for right now. And we'll have to see the inflation information coming out this week is that going to change what the market is currently thinking and will this number possibly shoot lower or continue to go higher the fed balance sheet continue continues to contract a bit and then looking at our charts here with breadth we had some pretty strong breadth so we saw a nice improvement based on price and volume the advanced decline ratio is also above zero in advancing, so that saw some improvement. New highs, new lows. We're not really seeing that, even on the daily charts. We're not seeing a breakout. It could be because we're in this area where we've been before, and for us to really generate some new highs, we need to break out into some areas that we haven't been for even longer now. But this is still negative. The accumulation distribution did turn up slightly, and it's above the moving average, so that is positive. Looking at our trend, this is what I'm talking about with the ADX declining. The red line is on top. And even though it's declining, the red line is on top. So we go with the negative trend. Now, it barely switched over to positive on the daily charts after Friday's session. So we're seeing much more of an improvement, at least on the daily charts. It's not really coming through to the weekly chart yet. Our rune is showing a decrease in selling as well as a decrease in buying. So we've been flat for the last few weeks. Mass index, this is becoming less and less relevant right now. The signal that was generated was quite a while back. That was the bottom that we hit, and then we came up out of that. Well, then our party kind of got rained on after Jackson Hole, and we've been coming down and now coming back up, and it's really not picking any of that up with this indicator. Looking at the long term, now this is, first of all, a daily chart, and this is what I'm talking about with the trend line. We came down to this trend line, which was at about 3,900. We actually broke down below it a little bit, but then we're able to come back and close above that. That was quite positive. This is then when things really started to shift. We saw a really nice up move, and we've come now what could be overhead resistance. We're at a pivot level. And this is based on the monthly, it's a daily chart, but it's based on monthly values. So we're, this suggests that we're at that tipping point. If we go above this pivot, that's more positive. If we stay below it, that's more negative. But we did recapture the 50 period moving average. But the market is just kind of on a knife's edge right now, and it could fall in either direction. Then the pivot points show that we we're able to get back above S1, but we still have a pivot level quite a bit above where we're at right now. We're still below the 50 period simple moving average on the weekly chart. Long term trend showing a little bit of improvement, but still in a downtrend. The bullish percent index is above 50 and advancing. So that's positive. The chicken oscillator is pretty much flat overall, showing more improvement on the daily chart, but we're not really seeing that in the weekly chart. Chicken money flow did see some improvement over the past week. That's positive. The force index is just about at zero here. So it's kind of on a knife's edge as well. McClellan oscillator, which had been really, really negative, actually shot back, went above zero, and has actually turned positive. Summation index is trying to turn up based on price and volume, but has not done so, although it has done this on the daily charts. Our oscillators, they're kind of going all over the place, but still positive overall. But these take longer to react to things, and they're not as beneficial in really choppy markets, which is what we've seen a lot of in the 2022 trading year. The Swindland Trading Oscillator, after being extreme negative, has now gone back to positive based on price and volume. Here's the PMO study with the PMO at the top showing a bit of an improvement, but still negative based on price and volume. Those PMOs that are rising after going extreme negative is now looking more positive. We're turning up with the buy signals, but still extreme negative. <clears throat> and the percent of PMOs that are above zero continues to decline. On the weekly chart, RSI, after coming down 
almost to give us an oversold indication, did turn up and is looking more positive, even though it's below 50. Currently, Special K continues to be positive. Stoke RSI, after coming down, saw a nice little bounce, as did the Williams Percent R in the past week. Vortex, it's still negative overall. The green line is declining. The red line is advancing. So we didn't see an awful lot of improvement on this chart. The ultimate oscillator turned up slightly, so that's looking a little better. The money flow index was flat. The Bollinger Band percent, this is measuring the percent B, how far away are we from the bands right here? We're just about neutral. And this is all suggesting that the market has poised itself at such a place right now where it could fall in either direction. The KSD continues to be positive. That's a long-term measurement. And the PPO is also positive. The rate of change going back one week did show some improvement going above this red line, but it could still go higher before it looks rather extreme. Going back 50 weeks, we did see a bit of an improvement. The Copic curve did a really nice job of signaling this bottom right here, and we're still kind of working off of that. It hasn't generated a new signal yet. We did not come down to the 38.2% retracement on the weekly chart. We've stayed above this support level right now, but you can see we're right back up to the 10 period moving average right here. And then looking at our different charts, we're still negative with the hike in ASHI. We are positive with the Keggy right now. We're positive with the Ranko. And we're seeing a little bit of weakness with the ease of movement. Going back one week, we see a little bit of improvement, but right about at the midpoint there. No new signals that were generated on the weekly point and figure chart. We still have a high pole warning. We saw a lot of zeros drawn in here. We've turned more positive on the daily chart, and it's taken this high pole warning off as far as a signal, but it, it, it's not generating a new signal. It just got rid of the negative signal. Three line break also starting to look a little better with the open candles, our different trading systems. We're neutral with the elder impulse system. We're still positive with the SAR. And that's one thing that did change in the daily charts. We were negative, negative, negative. And then after Thursday, we switched over to positive on the SAR. And this tends to be a, a pretty good indicator. The, you can have some big drawdowns with this. It can go against you for a while, but we tend to be on the right side of the trend when we use this indicator. Looking at some other areas, this is just a plain vanilla look at the S&P, the mid caps, which have been doing quite well, and the small caps. We're not seeing any real big divergences either way right now. All stocks did see a little bit of an improvement. The mid caps also improving, but still negative. Small caps, came right back up to the, the 13 period moving average here. Still in a downtrend overall. The Dow, same thing, right at this moving average in an overall downtrend. The NASDAQ broke a little bit above the moving average, but continues to be in a downtrend. So NASDAQ 100, a little bit above the moving average, but still in a downtrend. NYSE, a little bit above, downtrend. Wilshire, a little bit above, downtrend. Fang stocks bounced back slightly. They were up 3.71% on the week, and they're slightly above the moving average, but still in a downtrend. ARC was up 9.88% on the week, but it's right about at the moving average. So you can see a lot of prices are right at pretty critical points right now. The biggest software companies did show some improvement, up over 5% on the week, but still in an overall downtrend. Here's Dow Theory, showing how the Dow's been performing, the trannies. And I have a new chart that I'll show here in just a moment. I've been doing a lot more analysis looking at the utility sector because it, it likes that interest rates are going up and it tends to perform better. Well, sometimes we can get some clues from that. So looking at the CRB, this also helps to measure inflation. Even though we were down slightly on the week, we're still in an overall uptrend. Copper. It was up four and a half percent coming down to the 200 day moving average. I'm sorry. Yeah, the 200 day moving average here. And then gold, it, I don't know, it's, 
you, you just got to wonder, you would think, and a lot of people are blaming this on the dollar, but then you could go the other way around and say, well, gold's not doing well because the dollar's doing well. Or you could say the dollar's doing well because gold's doing bad. It, you can, you know, take it either way there. The chicken or the egg kind of argument. And then silver continues to really struggle as well. Oil actually dropped down below 90, but below 80, I'm sorry, and came back up to 86.79. Here's the dollar, showed a little bit of weakness overall, but it's still in just a monster uptrend, especially when you compare it to the other currencies. Bonds, we're not getting a lot of support from bonds right now. The scenario that I've been throwing out there is if we can see bond prices go up, that would bring interest rates down and that could help give some support to stocks. That's just not happening right now. Now that could change at any time, but right now bonds are just not doing all that well as we see yields continuing to advance. And this is a daily chart overall. Looking at some relative studies, oil still continues to be the best performer followed by the dollar where we have gold stocks and bonds negative on the year. Going back to the beginning, the bond to stock ratio saw a real decline. So here we're seeing a stock to bond ratio with an advance currently, but this is a monthly chart where the previous one was a weekly chart. Gold, which has really been having trouble, the dollar, which has really been doing well. So that's why we're seeing this ratio really fall off. Gold to the S&P really starting to underperform right now. Gold is. And then low volatility stocks declined a little bit this past week. This is what folks get into when they're more defensive on the markets. And they're still in an overall uptrend, but saw some recent weakness. Growth versus value saw a little bit of a tick up with growth, but growth is still in an overall downtrend. NASDAQ 100, growth against S&P, which is growth and value, ticked up slightly. So not big, big improvements here, but a little bit. The S&P 100 still continues to underperform the rest of the S&P 500. Discretionary, this is the one that's kind of been sneaking back when you compare it to staples. It actually had a nice little advance this past week. Energy showed a little bit of weakness when compared to tech, but energy is still in an overall uptrend. So what's our outlook? We got some big reports coming out. We've got CPI on Tuesday, PPI on Wednesday, jobless claims and retail sales on Thursday, as well as industrial production and capacity utilization. And then on Friday, we have consumer sentiment. So a week from now, we should have a much better gauge, you think, or is it going to be a lot more gray? Or some of those reports going to go, yay, we're going up. And then another report comes out, ooh, boo, we're going down. A lot of times that's how things play out. And so you just have to kind of take it as it comes and follow the charts that you see. So the technicals, they're showing some improvement, but most of our weekly charts still continue to be negative with a few of them switching over to positive. As I keep talking about inflation and interest rates, that'll be the real focus this week. You've got all these geopolitical concerns, Russia, Ukraine, China, the supply chain, they're Picking up with some more of the lockdowns in China, that could affect their economy, which could also influence the supply chain. Oil kind of bouncing around all over the place. Fed speak as it comes out and then earnings as they're released. And I'm not really dealing with Japan right now. That'll be something that might come into play in the future. So our scenarios, and this is based on the daily charts after Friday's session. We could still go down from here because of all the headwinds that I've been talking about, but the technicals are improving and turning positive. So that might make folks a little leery, leery to either sell or to go short because things are turning back more positive. Yeah, we could also go with an up scenario right now because we're seeing a lot of improving technicals, both in the short term and intermediate term on the daily charts. And we have to ask, can the bounce that we've been seeing, can that continue our scenarios, yeah, we they're showing some improvement, but they're still pretty much on hold right now because our technicals are improving, but we're still kind of, especially in the intermediate term, we're just as negative right now as we are positive because we're right at that inflection point currently. And then we can't really say that we're sideways, even though we're getting really close to 20 on the daily chart with the ADX, 
it is declining, but it's just turned over positive. So if if we really re, if we really start to move in either direction, the ADX may end up turning back up. So thank you. Hope you found this useful. I also have the inner market analysis video that you can look at. And that'll actually have the new chart in it that I was talking about. And um, as well as the daily full length video and the daily brief video.